Good morning, welcome to Fish with Bish. We're here again at Willow Marsh, this is part two. Uh, just had a conversation with Mark, enjoyed the first video, that's pretty cool. Come down, give this fishery a go, awesome place, absolutely brilliant. Good morning, welcome to Fish with Bish. We're back here again at Willow Marsh, this is part two, awesome fishery. Just take a look out there, that is absolutely brilliant. Talk, you, talk to you a bit more about the baits and the rigs and everything else that we're using. Uh, there's also coming up on this episode of Fish with Bish, uh, we've got the sandwich review. Can they be beat a seven out of 10 from last time? Let's see. Um, right, fish with dad again. No, he's not caught anything, that, that's cool. At least I can get in and and stay up with him today so welcome to fish with bish please subscribe smash the button hit the like button hit the bell button hit all the buttons uh, tell your friends tell your enemies leave a comment please thank you very much good night no hello roll the credits Right, I don't know how much of this you're picking up, but uh, welcome to Fish with Bish. Um, as I say, we're at Willow Marsh. You're gonna start off with uh, maggots. You're gonna move on to uh, pellets on the hook. Uh, I've just bought from the cabin uh, some micro pellets, which I always use the fish with micro pellets because it's what the fish are used to eating, it's because what everybody buys. But also, it acts as a bit of a ground bait as well puts a little bit of a carpet on the ground but with with the likes of carp and bream and tench they're not going to fill up on it not the amounts that I put in um, as I say always start off with maggots there isn't a fish swimming that won't take a maggot gives you an idea of what's there don't put points and points in just a pinch at every now and again every cast virtually and also while you're in the water and then that'll bring some of the fish in create an interest and then that will draw the rest of the fishing as part of the course for me not fishing way out there um, I have got some videos coming up with feeder fishing fishing um, with a method feeder at places that allow method feeder or with a bomb doing a bit of dubbing about but uh, initially I'm probably fishing I'd probably say about three meters out that's all that's all you need in a fishery like this because they have their ledges goes out obviously you've got your margins which I'll draw into later on in the day but you go a little bit further out steps down if you can find that step down and fish on the slope draw your uh, your rig onto the, the slope more like this pick up a fish so uh, I'm bored of talking to the camera now need to get on with the fishing fish with bish Try this rig first. Right, with the risk of uh, boring you guys who fish a lot, um, basically what I was doing there, I'm just plumbing around, just seeing what the depths are in the in the swim. Uh, my different options are where I can fish to. Um, I found a couple of spots are exactly the same depth, which sorry, just concentrate on this for a second. Um, just found a couple of spots that are uh, ideal, the same depth. I found somewhere that I want to want to swim. Want to swim? I don't want to swim at all. I don't want to go in at all. I found another spot that I want to fish to uh, a bit later on, which is a bit shallower in the edge but I'll set um, I'll set that rig up in a second but initially I found two really good spots 
One bike in the knee, Greek tour, one puppy in the knee. Welcome to Bishby Bish. This is Jane. She does the wonderful sandwiches which we're reviewing again today. No pressure. No pressure whatsoever. No pressure whatsoever. But she's got to be at a seven. Do you think she could do it? I think she can. All right, we'll talk a bit later. Thank you very much, Jane. <laughs> See you soon. Right, let's just talk you very quickly through the rig. Um, it's a Adrenaline 3 gram uh, bandit float. Uh, it's got a wire stem. We do like the wire stems because they they uh, sort of set the float very very quickly in the water. Um, I'm expecting it to be quite good today. Um, just about to put in first go, genuine first go. You've seen like proper footage. We've ordered the sandwich. Um, genuinely, two dead reds. So we're going to give it a go. I've just thrown a few few maggots out. And a few bits of uh, micro pellets, a few more. Let's have a go. Genuine first put in. Let's have a look, see what we get. I might have to just put a dust on the dust on the float. Sitting a bit high, a little bit of a touch there. And there might be a few roach here. This this pool's got some brilliant rudding, lovely, lovely rudding here. Floats all over the place at the minute. I think small fish, but it's always going to be foot small fish first. Right, and there we go. First fish. It's a good jink. There he is. Depth is perfect, going right in the top lip. So perfect depth there. Obviously, don't want to be catching gudgeon all day, but uh, a fish is a fish is a fish. As far as I'm concerned, as long as you don't get a duck, literally a duck. Uh, but as long as you don't uh, you don't crash out and catch nothing, it's a winner. Just being on the banks, nice enough. So you can see, basically, I'm fishing fishing with my top kit, but I have a section ready here um, in case anything does uh, does appear. It's a little bit bigger. It's the benefit of having the Maver pole roller is the fact that I can have it on two different settings. Oh. Now I know the fish are there now, and I know the smaller fish are there, but what I'm gonna do on the actual, on the actual band now, I'm still gonna feed, still gonna feed some maggots and the micro pellets. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a green stim pellet. Uh, what's that? That's, uh, I think that's an eight mil on the uh, on the band. Just see if there's anything down there, because I could spend a couple of hours with the. I could spend a couple of hours with the maggots picking up loads of little fish, some bigger fish and stuff like that. But now I know they're there. I'll just put a pellet on, just to see. Seeing if there's anything there that's going to pick up a bigger, a bigger bait.
Dad, has he just took a fish or a chi or a chick? Right, he's interested now with the pellet. So uh, I'm going to persevere with the pellets for a bit. So I think they're going to be bigger fish. <coughs> um, if I'm using a band, <coughs> what I also like to do, if I'm using a band, what, what happens is, obviously the heavier, heavier your, your pellet, if you've got it dead depth, then what happens is it pulls down the, down the float. So I always like to try and put my heaviest bait on early on in the session so I know exactly what to do with the float. Now I've put the pellet on, which is probably the heaviest thing I'll have on the hook, um, and it's still a little too far up. So what I'm going to do is put a tiny little dust, a uh, bit of interest there in the in the bait. So so as I, as I was interrupted, I'm just going to put a little bit of, of a dust shot on in a second, probably an 11, maybe even a 12, just to bring it down very, very slightly. Whoa, here we are, and we're in. I've got to be honest, that did look like a... Oh, it's come off. I wasn't quick enough then. But I think pellet might be the way, to be honest. That looked very much like a tench bite to me. Pretty slow on the uptake, and then as soon as he's, as soon as he realises he's hooked, he's away like a train. Now what that's told me is that I've got the right tactics, I've got the right float. Might need to just bring the the float down very much, very slightly, because tench bites tend to be quite quite finicky and, and slow pull down. So I need to know when it like when to strike. Also, what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put another section on, so I've got that option just to move the fish about a little bit more and put a bit more on them, stop him running away like that. So. Right, definitely getting bites. The green uh, green stem pellet is definitely the way to go. Um, what I might do is change the uh, my top kit for a stronger elastic. I've got a matte white on at the minute, which is... Uh, generally is like my go-to uh, elastic hollow elastic but i think i might go up a bit stronger if that fish just was anything to go by right welcome back to fish with bitch and our regular culinary feature of uh sandwich review as usual sausage egg and red sauce the lovely Jane has just brought it over. She assures me that it's made with a loving care. So we have our customary napkin, which I should tuck in, but I got told off from my wife for not putting it in correctly, so I'm not going to put it in at all. Right, we have, again, Superbly wrapped in silver foil to keep it warm. Lovely. We have egg, sausage, and sauce evenly distributed around the sandwich. Right. Here we go. Not such a big bite this time, so I can actually speak. Oh, surpassed herself. I will give this an easy 8.5 out of 10. Sorry, Jane, can't give you a 10 because you won't try as hard next time. Num, 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 num. Right, here we go on the sandwich. Welcome back to part two of the culinary review here on Fishery Bish. All the calves 
around the country are fighting and vying for my attention uh, to get my review. Um, you have your Michelin stars, you have your AA stars, and now you have your Fish with Bish stars. Willow Marsh and the Food Front are now on a 4 out of 5, so uh, Jane is a 4 star sandwich maker. Thank you very much. Uh, and now we're trying the coffee once again. Right. Yes, it's, it is coffee. Um, it's a, a lovely brownie coffee colour. Uh, it's warm, it's sweet, it's coffee. Again, a solid seven, because I don't think you can do much with uh, the coffee. No, a 7.5. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Right, back to the fishing. Oh, it's a bit better. Still not an amazing fish, but it's a bit better. Let's see if we can see what it is. Keeping it low. Oh yeah. Ten and a half. Looks like an F1. I didn't think they got them in here. It's a nice little car. There we go. Been perfect from Willow Marsh again. There it is, look. Beautiful looking fish. Got a mark on him. Let's get him back in. You're not careful, where's your mum? As we've seen in other previous episodes of Fish with Bish, I am friend to all animals. I am like Tarzan of the Apes and speak to them. And I could talk to them in the duck language. There's a baby just there on its own. Oh, sorry, this. Sorry about this fish. I mean, uh, birds. We now have fish action. I'm friend to all animals except for fish. With fish, I am an assassin. Oh, lovely tench. Got a nice tench, Dad. Got a nice tench. It's not, it's not massive, but... Uh... It's alright. I was, I was talking to the ducks in their native tongue. <laughs> not a massive amount, but look at that. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. I know I go on about it, but amazing wild creatures. So here we go, back in. Right. I think this is uh, another tench. Feels like a tench. It's not big, but yeah, another tench. Another little tinker. Right. I don't want to sort of lift him up from the line, but let me just show you. If I show you there, the hook, this is how I know that I'm at exactly the right depth. The hook is in the top at the middle of his mouth. So I know that is in the perfect position. <coughs> Another 
almost mirror image of the one I've just caught. It's not the same one, I promise you. So, there we go. Another little tinker. Now, tench do shoal. They do, they, 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 well, I think when they're a bit bigger, they tend to sort of, I was going to say stroll around, but they don't stroll around, do they? They, they sort of swim around in pairs and or whatever. But when they're, that's, when they're that kind of size of that one and the previous one I caught, they seem to, uh, they seem to shoal together. So if you get one, you can get like three or four of those. So I've now found the spot where they need to be and I know how to get my bait there so if you imagine I'll just show you if you imagine there's a bank and at the bottom of the bank it goes and swings round what I want to do with my bait is come I drag it across so that the bait either sits on the bank or at the bottom of the bank there hopefully the very bottom of the bank and you find the fish congregate there because they know that the bait falls down the bank or that's where it'll congregate not just bait that's where food in general will congregate because it'll fall down although it's in water it will sort of eventually make its way to the to the bottom so the pellet's still still good so we'll go back out we'll see see what we can get we'll see if i can do this one in real time so that that tench we've just caught there and i'll show you what i mean so I know the bank is, I know exactly how far I'm fishing out. I put my, my float in and I drag it across until I want the position. Now my bait is falling through the water, arcing through the water until it hits the bank and then it'll settle. So this is real time. I know there's more fish there because um, Because there's going to be more than what we do, not sod off. Go ahead. Now, if you look at my float now, I'm, there we go, and we're in. Or am I on the bottom? I was on the bottom. There's definitely a fish that took it. Right, so again, I know there's fish there because it's just took me under. Drag it to the, to the bend in the corner of the slope. So now my, my bait is now at the very, very corner of that slope and I know that they're fishing there. I know they're there, I know they're congregated there because every time I go in now I'm having a bite, but there we go, and I'm in there. And this is either a bigger tench or it's a car. So keep the end low, keep the angle, it's a bigger tench. So there we go, it's a bigger tench. Slightly bigger, it's not much bigger, just a little bit bigger. But again, it's cut right in the corner of the mouth. So this one has been caught in real time from the last one. Whoop. Right, let me see if I can get him out without him being crazy mad. Right, now this one, you can tell this is a male because he's got these protrusions on the back by these fins. He's also got much bigger fins at the back. This one's got a very strange dink in his in his side there. That looks like a healed uh, where a heron has had him at some point. But look at that fish, absolutely gorgeous. Look at his orange eye. So there we go, lovely fish. Let's get him back. The mother duck there didn't like the fact that. <laughs> that the tent rose just in front. Because obviously the baby ducks, I mean not in here, but baby ducks get taken for by, uh, by the herring gulls, they get taken by gulls in general. Uh, also pike will take them, so uh, there's no pike in here. Uh, but last time we were here we did see the coot take a, a, a baby coot taken by a herring gull. But, uh, or a gull. So 
Anyway, let's get back out. Um, I just need to make this perfectly clear because obviously I'm, I'm using these green stim pellets and I keep saying, oh, these are good and stuff like that and use them. And so I need to say that I'm not sponsored by anybody at all. Nobody sponsors me and I'm not paid by anybody to do reviews of their sausage sandwiches. I actually pay for my sandwich, uh, I pay for my fishing, and I pay for my bait. So uh, at no point am I sponsored in any kind of way. So uh, all my reviews, or if I'm telling you anything that I think is working or anything like that, it's, it's because I genuinely think it's working, not because people are paying me. And if I find a, a cheaper alternative or a, a better alternative, I'll use it. But at the moment, these green stem pellets seem to be the one for me, especially for the especially for the tanks. They seem to like them. So, uh, I don't know if they look like a snail or something like that. I don't know, or what the whether they like the flavour. But uh, I've managed to move off the the smaller fish now. Uh, I think that's a benefit of using pellets. Still, I'm, I'm not I'm not using uh, maggots for the bait in this swim. But I am going to start using them in another spit, in another swim to get the uh, get the fish in. So there you go. Um, having said that, I'm not sponsored. Uh, if you want to know any of the kit I'm using or any of the baits that I use, and I'm finding a a really good, just look at the comment section below. Have a look at the links there. Press on the link, and it'll take you straight through to where I get them from, how much you pay for them. So, uh, no, these green stim pellets, they are good. Anyway, back to the fishing. Alright. I quite like it when I do get quite a few bites because it means I don't have to do so much editing. Because that takes a long time. another tench that feels like a tench. I think I've got another tench. This is a bit better than the ones I've been having. Right, so let's just tire himself out. He's had the initial run. So drop down to the top kit. a little bit of pressure on him by using the, the pulley kit. I can see there's lots of fish down there because he's just disturbed them all. So, it is a tench, I can see it's a tench. Another nice one and as you can see, if you can see the pellet on the edge of the edge of the lip there. I'm quite happy with the way it's been presented on the ground. So I've lost, I've lost count of how many tents that is. There we go. Beautiful tench. Let's get it back. I'm um, actually going to do I'm actually going to do a video soon about uh, how I set up. Um, everybody's different, but uh, what I'll do is I'll set up in the back garden as if I was about to fish, just to show you how I set up and make it easy, easy for yourself and make it make it comfortable for fishing. Um, pellet's still okay, so I'm going to put the pellet back out. But uh, no, I'll do one in the garden, and we'll. Uh, We'll have a look how I set up, how I set it all up so it's nice and comfortable. Right, let's, uh, let's get ourselves back in the water, back fishing. Right. Now I know, I know there's plenty of fish there because, well, I don't know if they're there now because that fish went through the swim and disturbed them all and I saw them all move. So I'll give it a few minutes, I'll put a few 
and we're back in again. They're definitely all they're definitely there, so I might as well keep it real time fishing because it means I haven't got a I haven't got a ready. So I've dragged it along so it's in the right position. I know exactly how far out I've got I've mark, I've got a mark on my on my pole so I know how far out I should be. I've got a mark on the far bank and I know if I draw that in, I'm getting it in exactly the same spot and I'm getting a fish, whoa, a chuck. Or I would do if I was any kind of fisherman at all. I'm gonna fish a chuck now, are you, Dad? What do you have the carp on? Whoa, and again. Oh, I see. What, did you squeeze the corn? Pardon? Did you squeeze the corn? So you just got the skin? No. Or just pick a small one? Pick a small one. Right, we're in again. This is another tench, this is. Right, what I'm doing, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna feed the swim while, he's, while I'm playing this fish. Yeah, another tench, smaller one. You get you get used to knowing what the what the bites are, and if you can see where that pellet is, again, exactly the right position. I've found out where them tents are feeding. And if I hit the right spot every single time, at the minute I can get one every single time. Right, let's cough the let's cough the hook out. This one's only a small little dinky fish. So let's have a look at him. There he is. Lovely little fish. Brilliant orange eyes. Um. Right, I was having a chat with uh, Mark, who's, uh, I think he's the new owner, or I think he's just took over properly. Um, I can't, I can't say enough good things about about here. Again, I'm not being sponsored. Mark makes me pay uh, for to fish. Um, really friendly place. You saw, you saw the lovely Jane who makes the sandwiches. Um, I think he's he's looking to expand. He's looking to make this a real nice place to come. It's a lovely place to come anyway. But uh, give it a go. You saw me and Dad fish the big the the big pull, brilliant for uh, for carp fishing and using because it's a much bigger, so using your uh, your bleepers and things like that. Not my not my kettle of fish, but <laughs> kettle of fish. <laughs> uh, not what I like doing, but like if you, if that's what you're into, you got a lovely nice big space of water there. We've got here, which I think this is called the whispers. And you've seen how many tents you've got. Up until um, we're in June now. Up until uh, up until sort of last time I came here on this pool, I think I'd had one, two tents this this season. And now you've just seen in quick succession what well, I've had five. Um, and I know there's more down there. I just know they're there. Um, so let's get in. Um, I'll try and give you a bit more information about Willow Marsh. I, what I'll do is I'll do that trendy thing that I've taught myself how to do. Uh, I will put a map in. Um, I will uh, put a link in to the, uh, get, get, get them on Facebook. Um, I will put a link in for their Facebook page and stuff like that. Um, as I say, have a look out for other, other videos about Willow Marsh. Um, don't just take my word for it. Um, but genuinely lovely place to come and I'm getting another bite, so let's put it back down there. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to you ladies of Spain. For we've received orders for the sail back to Boston. And so never more shall we see you again.